Alright, since I didn't see one, it's time for an awesome games thread. DM okay guys, time to start the game. What are you guys playing? Friend I'm playing a dwarven barbarian. He liked booze a little too much and got kicked out of his mountain home. DM okay, sounds good. How about you, Anon? Me well, ah, I also rolled up a barbarian. He's a human though, who's lived in the shadow of the same mountain his entire life but never knew there were dwarfs there. That's how me and friend one met. DM huh? Okay. I guess we can make it work. And what about you guys? Friend 2, 3 and 4 all look at each other. Friend 3 well. Uh, we all rolled barbarians too. The DM looks at all of us. Then rifles through his notes for the next couple of sessions and throws away about half of it DM well. Gents. Let's fucking do this. And so began our Albabarian campaign. Well, since you guys asked, I'll start with a bit of backstory. These guys have been my friends for a long time now. They were the first people I ever played DD with, and it had been quite some time since I'd Ral played with them. So, when my friend who had usually been a player suggested we all try and play a game, we jumped on the chance. There are six of us, including the DM, me, who will be Anon for the purposes of this story. Friend 1, who shall be J. Friend 2, who shall be T. Friend 3, who shall be G. And friend 4, who shall be M now. I was usually the one to play the Dex characters, rogues, rangers and the like. So I saw this game as a chance to change up my playing style. However, we're all pretty fucking bad at communication and we're pretty busy people. So we didn't really talk about the kind of characters we would be playing. So the day finally rolled around. We all show up on time with our dice and our character sheets and take our seats around the table. After the shock of the initial realization, we laugh it off and start playing. DM so the five of you are seated across from the adjudicator of the city. He gazes balefully at you. Jay I'm sorry, but my character's and score is 7. What do those words mean? We snicker. DM adjudicator is man who make law. Balefully is angrily. J okay. DM shuffling a sheaf of papers between his hands. Looking at you again Balafa, angrily, he tells you that there are a number of criminals that need to be apprehended. He stands up and hands you the list. The DM gives me a handwritten list of names, descriptions, reasons for warrant, and bounty amounts. I turn it over in my hands, staring intently at the paper from all angles, then turn to the DM. Me. Thragma can't read, we all giggle again. The DM sighs. DM so, who can? G raises his hand. G my character can. He has an in score of 12. We all look at him in disbelief. G it's true. His name is Sir Grog, Esquire. He's a nobleman of sorts. The DM puts his head in his hands. DM I really should have looked over your characters beforehand. But alright. Continue. G proceeds to read out the list of criminals while we listen. Completely enraptured by his ability to read which is a foreign concept to all of our characters. After a bit of bickering, we decide the first person we're going to track down is a horse thief who's set up camp a few leagues outside of the town. Fast forwarding a bit, after a long ride out to the hideout of the horse thief, during which we praised Grog a lot for his astounding ability to read, we finally get to the cave system he'd been using a little cliched. I know, but the DM is a fan of such things. We dismount, and after a few minutes of planning, decide that we're going to try and sneak up to the entrance. DM well, the thief has a couple of sentries posted. M okay guys, I have an idea. Let's disguise one of us as a tree and sneak up on them. We all agree this is a fantastic idea. DM fine, roll then. M rolls a disguise check, and we assist him, giving him a 4 to disguise himself as a tree. He rolls a 13 which gives him a 17 to the roll, making it a success. His roll to sneak, however, is another story. He rolls a 6, which takes a 2 because he's disguised himself as a fucking tree. DM the sentries notice you. M I cast sleep on them. We all look at M like he's gone bananas. J you said you were a barbarian. M I am. Just listen. He then proceeds to tell us how his barbarian pulls out his arcana carved stick. Wave it around chanting nonsense for a few seconds, then point it at the two guards, shouting, sleep now, 
Both M's Barbarian and the guards are perplexed, the Barbarian because he doesn't know why the spell didn't work, and the guards because they don't know what the fuck is happening. So M's Barbarian did the only thing a Barbarian would possibly do in that situation get frustrated and bash them over the head with his wizard staff, knocking them out cold. We love this turn of events, and even the DM cracks a grin at the creative role playing. We decide that there's no reason for us to even attempt to sneak around inside the hideout, and instead opt to break down the door. We cleave and bash our way through plenty of baddies, eventually reaching the chambers of the horse thief. DM his chambers are draped in all sorts of cloth and chains, with arcane scrolls adorning the walls. There are books everywhere, and atop a tall pedestal a skull with a pentagram on the forehead glares down at you with a malevolent air. He proceeds to read off a long, impressive speech by the horse thief about the coming of the end of all things. After patiently waiting it out, we initiate combat, quickly killing the fragile NPC, and hack off his head and thumbs. T okay, let's get out of here. DM but don't you want to look around some more? Gee we already got everything of value out of this place, let's just take off. DM but what about his books me dude? We're fucking barbarians. What the hell are we going to do with books? The DM huffs, but can't really do anything to stop us since he abhors railroading. So we strike back out towards the town. Severed head and thumbs dangling in a sack off the side of the horse. Over the course of the game which unfortunately only lasted about a two dozen or so sessions due to college getting in the way and respective jobs limiting our time. We collect each of these outlaws, and each time they have a pretty similar setup going on a seemingly mundane criminal in possession of a great deal of magical items, and, each time without fail, our simple minds would miss out on the connection, get distracted by shiny things and other magnifins, and fail to notify anyone of import about what was going on in these lairs. But, I have to tell you, it was a hell of a ride. The dwarf was tossed on multiple occasions, and in one instance ended up inside the guts of a giant. He proceeded to hack his way up through his body, cut the heart out of it, and burst out of his chest, screeching, then take a tremendous bite out of the still beating organ. We were all a bit more afraid of him after that. Probably my finest moment in combat rolling occurred during this campaign, too. We were fighting a group of greater bar guests, and I had just been disarmed. Not about to lay down and let these things eat my face. I rolled a 19 on a strength check to grab the nearest one by the tail and swing it about, bashing the other bar guests into the negatives. I wasn't content with just that, though. There was still one standing after that. So I rolled a Mathurficking nat 20 and, in a scene straight out of Dwarf Fort, tossed the bar guest through the other bar guest. But I digress. Despite our best efforts to continue meeting, the time finally came when our boisterous group of brawny barbarians was to disband. We'd proven our worth a hundred times over to the townspeople, so they were rewarding each of us with a small parcel of land and a good deal of gold. Sir Grog would finally be a real lord, with real peasants and real holdings, and Eurist Medbird the dwarf could have his very own, genuine dwarven tavern to destroy every night in a drunken rage and build back up again in the morning. Thragma was not content to settle down, so he planned to sell the land, get an even bigger axe with the money, and find the legendary plain of Isgard, where he could fight, drink, and wench for all eternity. He eventually got there, but that's another game entirely. Rolf became the most famous muscle wizard in the land, and planned to use his gold, land, and influence to start a school for his unique brand of magic. But fate, the DM, and our good friend Jay, had other plans. His grin was absolutely malicious as he sat behind his screen and described the calamity that befell us as we were awarded our holdings. It was as if he'd finally found a way to get back at us for derailing his campaign so completely, so spectacularly, that there was no way in hell he was going to finish it the way he'd planned to. So he decided to try and do the next best thing kill all of our characters. What it boiled down to was this each of the outlaws had been part of the same malevolent cult seeking to resurrect a forgotten beast which slumbered beneath the township. Its name had been lost to the ages, but pictures had survived, and some bright bulb decided he wanted to see this thing firsthand. Fortunately for us, the cultists had mucked up their spells without being able to figure out how to get the spell to activate. Unfortunately for us, behind our backs, Jay and the DM had conspired to make Jay the final piece of the puzzle, 
which would awaken the slumbering monster and hopefully kill us all. DM as you stand atop the stage, cheering throngs of townspeople all around you, you're all suddenly jostled out of the way. J.I. shove the party aside and toss the mayor away from the pedestal. Fools, you come here on this day for celebration, but I am here to tell you that this day heralds your doom. With those words, I draw my long sword and plunge it through my own heart, falling off the stage onto the ground in front of it. Our fucking faces when DM the ground quakes and begins falling apart, a great groaning and gnashing of teeth rising up from the cracking earth. 200 yards away, an entire section of the town disappears, sliding beneath the ground as something massive stirs. Moments later, from within the bowels of the earth, the unnamed one rises, its men are tentacles whipping about its head in a bloody frenzy as its eons long slumber finally ends. The townspeople scream and panic, running in every direction in their primal fare. Women and children scream and cry, the old and weak are trampled underfoot and men go mad at the sight of such a monstrosity. It opens its seven gaping maws, looses a mighty roar, and begins charging towards you. Roll for initiative. Again, our fucking faces when we all roll reasonably well. I get a 16, M gets a 15, G gets a 19, and Trolls a 13. Unfortunately, the DM knew we do fairly well on our initiatives, so to counteract the penalty to initiative that massive creatures take, he stacked improved initiative on the monster something like 5 times, and it went first. Luckily, he gave us this round to prepare, as it would take at least 2 turns for the beast to get over to where we were. We went into a quick huddle, made our plan, and stood our ground against the charge. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to be beset upon by a kraken, when you're armed only with a great sword of magic power and dubious origin? How about if that kraken was on land, could cast several level 3 spells as abilities, as chewing both materials and somatic components, and did 3d 1035 damage per swing. That's what it was like fighting this monster. I tell you, if we hadn't plundered an amazing amount of gold from each of the hideouts due to DM fiat in treasure generation, we wouldn't have stood a chance. As it was, we were getting pummeled, and we needed to end it fast. So T passes me a note. I look at him, and solemnly nod my head. DM Anon, the round passes to you. What are your actions? Me I turn to Eurist, who grabs my forearm as I grab his. T I just want ye to know. Twas the greatest honor I ever knew fight in alongside ye. Me I feel tears well up in my eyes, and I see them welling up in Eurists too. I hand him my portable hole, and he takes out his bag of holding. T now toss me. You sodding moron, one last time. The DM looks stunned. DM roll, roll strength. I rolled. I wish I could say it was a natural 20, because by god, Eurists deserved it, but it wasn't. It was a 19. With my strength modifier, and the featuring from Complete Warrior that lets you toss things better, that added up to a 31. Me I spin Eurists around, tears streaming down my face into my beard as I do so and toss him into the gaping maw of the unnamed one. DMT, the round passes to you. You take 23 points of crushing damage and 47 points of acid damage, which brings you to 3 HP. TI put the portable hole in the bag of holding. The DM looks at us, then at his notes, then leans back in his chair. DMA portal opens up, sucking you and the unnamed one into the astral plane. We all passed our strength checks to avoid being sucked through. Miraculously, everyone was quiet for a few minutes after that. The DM looked as if he was cycling between pure, unadulterated fury and helpless adoration at the defeat of his BBEG. Jay just looked sullen. He wanted us to die with him, not defeat the monster in such an epic way. The town built a statue to memorialize Eurist for his sacrifice. To this day, the township and the other party members like to think he's on some better plane. One with lots of booze and fighting. I know better though, because, as it turned out, he was. But, like I said before, that's a story for another day. <coughs> Anon what is best in life? To meme your enemies to see them driven to their safe spaces and to hear the lamentations of their non-binary other kin. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, 
This is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?